Hi, and welcome to Thursday, April the 16th. This is a confidence on camera lesson, and today we're talking about industry things. We've got uh, Ken Dace Fulton from Kirk Talent joining us. I wanted to do a quick recap uh, before we get into looking at her IMDb profile. Uh, this is something that we have uh, talked about the last couple of Thursdays, and I just think it's important to go over again, you know, which is like, who's in charge of what? So who are we talking today? Yeah, um, the producer is in charge of what? Yeah, just shout it out. Money. 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 Exactly. But, you know, like, and you, get, you all got to jump in there because otherwise Josh is just, just going to say them all. You know, come on, people. You know, like, you've heard this a couple of times. The, uh, uh, the director's in charge of what? The story. Ooh, the story. story. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Right. So we got the producer in charge of the money, the direction in charge of the story. They're overseeing that. Uh, the casting director, you know, who uh, we saw last Friday, we're going to see this Friday, is in charge of what? The auditions. The auditions. auditions. Exactly. 100%. They're in charge of the auditions. Who gets to have an audition, running the actual audition, that's their job. The talent agent who we're going to meet today is in charge of what? The, the, actors. Actors. the actors. The actors. Exactly. Right. So they are a professional salesperson whose only job it is to sell actors. You know, and so um, they're the person who's doing all of the talking to the casting director. So they know about that. Uh, they know how to manage a group of actors. They know sort of what actors. Um, uh, they know uh, what actors should say to talent agents. I'm just really excited to get a perspective on uh, what's happening in the world of talent agenting right now. Uh, and then actors, you know, uh, are responsible for themselves. Right, themselves, exactly. Wow. Right. So the if you're an actor, you are responsible for myself. Yourself. Um, exactly. So that's your job. Uh, is to be responsible for yourself. You know, next week, uh, we might put a little bit more time into looking at uh, demo footage, which we haven't talked about yet, you know, uh, or headshots, you know, one or the other. So those, that's my plan for the next couple of Thursdays. Um, headshots. <laughs> right? Probably a good idea to talk about those. Uh, the looks like uh, Candace is still not uh, getting messages, so I have to multitask and do technical things for just a moment, but then we're going to uh, look at her. Okay. Uh, but then we're going to look at her IMDb pro, uh, profile. So why don't I get you started looking at that? You know, uh, so you don't have to wait for me while I'm doing things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, IMDb is the Internet Movie Database. Uh, if you are a have a pro membership, or if you, I don't have any skin in the game, by the way. IMDb doesn't pay me, and I'm not savvy enough to like do any advertising. I'm just saying this because like I'm a member and I find it useful. Uh, right when you need to look these things up, particularly if you happen to be uh, in the space of like doing research about talent agents and uh, trying to find one, uh, you can get a temporary membership, uh, and that'll uh, give you the opportunity to. Um, uh, that'll give you the opportunity to look up specifics about each talent agent and go over their roster and say, is, do they have anybody who looks like me, uh, right? Who's sort of in my type with my build, you know, who's you know, got my skin tone or you know, whatever it is that you're uh, looking for that would be a match. This is sort of one of those things that agents are thinking about. Uh, Getting candies. Okay, so she might be another uh, couple of minutes because she is having technical difficulties. Uh, let me show you uh, Candace's um, IMDb Pro. Uh, so has everybody seen the screen? Yeah? Okay, great. You know, so we've got um, 
we would look up Candace talent uh, Fulton doesn't have a picture it's got a bunch of clients here um, this thing is a, a feature that uh, IMDb Pro has it's very unreliable uh, because it's essentially a measure of who is being the most talked about on, on IMDb Pro, so of their the millions of people who have profiles on there, uh, but it's better than nothing. You know, it's a, a way to benchmark and go like, okay, sort of where am I at compared to some of the other clients here? And so if you're comparing internally, if you're like, I'm gonna compare my star meter rating you know, to other actors' star meter rating, eh, it, at least it gives you some way to look at you know, who's being talked about the most or who's um, sort of in projects that you know, have the most momentum right now. Um, but it is not perfect. It's definitely not something that you want to like sort of hang your life goals on. Uh, and so these folks uh, are always, clients are always listed uh, from whoever's you know, got the highest star meter value, whoever's sort of booking the um, most, uh, the things that are uh, being talked about the most right now. Um, so we can see We've got a bunch of adults and some dudes, and there's probably some younger people if we go a little bit further down. You know, uh, the, oh, right, here we go. Deadly Class, Riverdale, uh, the 64 clients, and I think I've said this before, you know, anything up to about 100 clients is pretty normal. Um, the, if you are talking to your agent, you know, and, uh, or a potential agent, and you look them in the eye and you say, hey, um, I, you know, do, how many clients do you have? And they're like, uh, I have 300 clients. You know, then probably, you know, that's a smaller agency that's just kind of throwing people at the wall to see who sticks. Hey, we have Candace Fulton. We're looking at, uh, Candace's, um, list right now. Here's this handsome guy, uh, right here in, and about the dead middle. Right, and this, if I think if we go down, you know, we'll, we'll start to see, usually folks without a photo, uh, they don't have uh, enough professional credits that IMDB, you know, hasn't added a photo of themselves and they haven't paid for a professional membership. So my guess is that Zaya here, you know, who looks like she may have, you know, one, uh, you know, cr uh, professional credit, maybe, maybe she's done tons of commercials. Commercials never show up on um, IMDB. Uh, but probably she, uh, her mom's paid for a pro account, which is why she's got her headshot attached to it. Um, so this is just a little bit of like, you know, credibility establishing for Candace so that you know that she's been doing this for a long time and she really knows what she's talking about. So I'm going to stop the screen share. And I'm going to stop talking because we came here to listen to her talk and I'm unmute everybody uh, so that you can all say hello. And it looks like we lost her in exactly the moment where I tried to unmute everyone. Uh, okay. Uh, some of you have muted yourselves. Uh, okay, I am going to. Uh, and so I will wait for her to come back. Any uh, questions about uh, sort of the role of the talent agent? You know, the, like I can answer basic questions and then she can answer the more specific ones just so that i know how many people here have talent agents currently <laughs> hey you gotta like gotta start somewhere <laughs> you're like thanks thanks for taking that in strides out i'm getting there what was the question <laughs> how many people have talent agents yeah yeah <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, the, hey, she's back. Technology. Hi there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, uh, Candace, I was just asking all, all of these uh, young folks, uh, how many of them have talent agents? If you go up, I don't know if you've done a lot of, used Zoom a lot, but if you go in the top right corner of your screen, you'll see um, there's a gallery view and it's just got like like six or nine little gray dots. And if you click on that, you'll be able to see everybody all at once. Oh, I see. Okay, perfect. Uh, and so Amazing. I'm- Amazing. Hi there. You. Uh, the, just so that Candace knows, uh, how many of you have talent agents currently? Right. You know, so uh, now there's also quite a few people who've been watching these videos uh, from home because they're busy in the afternoon. You know, so it would be great if we can you know, kind of talk about both. Um, I'm going to mute everybody uh, ex 
except you, of course. Yep. Sounds good. And um, the, where do you want to start, you know, talking about the you know, life and times of uh, talent agent in quarantine? Yeah, I mean, it's been a, a very interesting time. Um, of course, this has never happened before. So this is, I have to say, this is probably the first 100% break I've had from the industry in 22 years. So um, it's been a, a very different beast. Um, and I think moving forward, it is going to, it's going to change a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me what you're thinking or, or expecting there, because you've got sort of an inside perspective that none of us have. Yeah, I mean, it's more just in the rumor mill, because of course, at this stage, um, there's not a lot of breakdowns coming out, and everything has pretty much stopped. But on the other side, in the whole development side, they actually have a lot going on, which is, you know, very promising for the business, because... Um, on my work Zoom meetings, um, they've been talking about scripts, writers, uh, you know, still hiring directors. So there's still lots of things on that side. So we know that that's still happening and there's no stopping um, how busy they are on that side of things. So. Oh, okay. um, for context, everybody, Kirk is one of the uh, agencies in town that's large enough that they have uh, folks um, through their uh, in integral artist is it called you know the exactly yeah co division that represents uh writers and directors and things and so that's a uh, that's cool you know that you get that perspective yeah exactly and they're really busy so um so i anticipate but this is maybe me being a little bit enthusiastic um that things might be up and running by july or august yeah but that being said, how it's going to change things, um, we don't really know, but there's been sort of spatterings and sort of rumors of how, you know, because of course it sort of ultimately, um, you know, all the LA people have to come up to Canada and that's, you know, that's, that's going to be a big deal is opening the borders. Mm -hmm. And then of course, how many people are allowed on set? Because of course, all the crews and everything, that's lots of people. And, and a lot of people in like, you know, small spaces. And so I think that's going to change how many people can, can work and sort of the distance that they have to be. Um, and probably the masks and gloves will be a new thing on set. Um, I think maybe, you know, sort of testing a lot because of course they want to make sure ultimately the actors are the ones that they're going to make sure that, that they are, you know, safe, um, and you know, everyone's safe. But, uh, but of course, if you have an actor that's in a series and they're in like every episode of the series, then they, they need to be, you know, definitely safe. So. So yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of changes coming up, um, and it's going to be very different. Yeah, yeah. The um, sort of best guess, you know, no, knowing that like there's so much uncertainty on kind of every stage of things. You know, but I'm I'm curious to get your best guess about how those changes you know, will affect the Vancouver-based actors, or might affect the Vancouver-based actors who you represent. You know, like what what are you thinking about? Yeah, well, I mean, um, it might change in the fact that they're going to sort of bring up the guest stars less. And so we might have more opportunities in Canada to keep, you know, our actors actually working on sets as opposed to them, them bringing up all the leads and the guest stars and all that sort of thing. So, um, so I've heard that that could be a positive change for BC. Um, plus the fact that, um, that how we're handling everything in BC has been really good. Um, and so supposedly it's going to be a real hot spot when everything is up and running. Uh, I see. It's, if um, BC sort of keeps a reputation as being a safer place to work than some places in the States, for instance. That exactly, kind of exactly. LA has been pretty, pretty good. Of course, New York is not. <laughs> um, but it, it is really contingent on people traveling across the borders. And I don't know when that's going to happen. I mean, I heard, just heard an announcement that that uh, they're staying closed for the time being, of course. And so I would think at least six weeks and then, and then, you know, 
then they're going to have to implement all the changes, um, which are really going to change things and probably add, add times to say, if you go to set and getting your makeup done, everything's going to be, you know, very different and might add, you know, an hour or two onto your day if, if you're on set. Um, yeah, so it is going to change. And then, of course, the auditioning process could very well change. Yes, mm -hmm. we had uh, Candace Elsinger uh, on last week and Judy Lee on the week before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was the first casting director who um, said this might be the new normal. You know, Zoom auditions, Skype auditions, uh, self tape auditions. You know, yeah. that's what her and her team are talking about. Uh, and uh, the, they've basically talked about sort of what will the consequences be for them if they're out of the game for four months. So they, they might be um, instituting something just so that they can see a whole bunch of actors, you know, and uh, like use this time productively for themselves. Exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. So I was just going to ask how, uh, how you anticipate uh, the audition game might change you know, for Vancouver based actors. Um, auditioning like via Zoom and Skype and that type of thing. Have you heard that from, uh, you know, we, like we heard it from Candice, but is that something yeah. that is, is being talked about in your circles as well? Have you, have you yeah, yeah. That? I've seen a couple of breakdowns that they've put out more as a test run yes. uh, to see how it's going to work. And just, you know, because of course we all have these technical difficulties like I just did. Um, so sometimes it can be like less seamless. Um, so I think they're trying to iron out the kinks that, and sort of anticipate how that might work. And, you know, potentially if you have to read with another actor or, you know, so it is gonna be a different beast, definitely, um, how they're gonna configure it. Um, I think the casting would probably know more on, on um, you know, what they're thinking and how they're they're thinking about doing that. Well, we're gonna ask them one at a time, you know, but yeah. uh, you're in the position yeah. where you have probably heard little bits and pieces, you know, from a bunch of different folks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And have they been saying that, that, that uh, that's what they're thinking about in the relative? That's, that's what Candace said. Uh, Judy didn't say anything about it a couple of weeks ago, but things are changing so rapidly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To ask Tiffany tomorrow, you know, it's definitely one of the things that we're going to ask her tomorrow. And, you know, we're, hopefully we'll keep getting different casting directors uh, join us on Fridays. And I'll, uh, I'll keep you apprised uh, about how that, um, the, if there's consensus that's arriving. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because I don't know when it's going to be a normal process when you go back into a room with a whole bunch of people. Um, you know, who knows? That could be six months. It could, you know. So, um, right. so maybe they'll just hire people off like self tape or you know off um, Skype or Zoom. And you've, I mean, self tapes uh, is still something that your clients have been doing for years. Yes, exactly. Um, and so you've watched um, as many self tapes as you know some casting people, I'm sure. Uh, the what would you say? Uh, what, what advice would you give uh, to actors at home who are thinking about like how to make a self tape that's really going to grab people? I would definitely stick with. Um, a sort of bluish background or something that's pretty neutral, like um, like what you have, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, uh, something that, you know, you don't have a bunch of books or dishes or pictures or anything like that. It's more just you, um, of course, horizontal and, and like, you know, like very close to, you know, head and shoulders, which I'm sure you guys already know because you've been training with Michael. But- um, what people say it is always good. Yeah, because some of my actors, when I get a self tape, they're really far away and they have, you know, lots of sort of chaos in the scene, which which can tend to take away from the scene. And and they tend to like you to have, you know, a live reader. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going to be changing, too, because now um, over the course of this, you don't always have someone to read with. And so so the whole kind of recorded reader or, you know, someone who's just kind of speaking over Skype. Or, we're, we're, yeah, we're figuring out how to do um, have the reader uh, be uh, via Zoom. It's actually fairly straightforward. You know, if uh, for yeah. anybody who hasn't had me go over this yet. Basically, you scooch to one side of the screen, you have the other person scooch to what the, the other opposite side of the screen, and then you can look them in the eyes uh, and yeah. on camera like you're talking to the real person, you can talk to them live. So it can be super effective, you know, and then and often, and if you're hosting a Zoom meeting, you can just record that uh, and the file size will often be small enough to send. 
Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, the okay, final question before I let uh, them at you. Uh, what would you, what would you, as a talent agent, you know, and like professional salesperson of actors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, love to see your clients, you know, uh, the younger ones or any of them, uh, be doing so that they're ready to go when uh, the breakdowns do start coming in again. Like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give for folks about how to use this time? Yeah, I mean, I would just. Uh, sort of consistently be sort of working on your craft now that you have a little bit of time to do that because sometimes life can be so busy that you know you don't always have the time to sort of invest in it so just just sort of keep on on training because when the business does come back I think it's going to be fast and furious so then then you'll be you know like very ready to go um yeah i would say you know and then you know just just have everything ready like have your you know shots and your resume and just everything's up to date so it's you know everything's just seamless because now that we have that's what i'm working on too with my clients just to make sure that all their profiles are up to date their headshots um because this is you know a time that I've never had where I can really invest it back into my actors and just make sure that because as soon as it comes back I think that they're gonna be making up for lost time and it's gonna be even faster than it was before right so, yeah. especially if, like you said the a lot of the production side people are using this downtime to put into place whatever they're gonna make next exactly exactly yeah uh, great well I'm gonna switch to gallery so we can see everybody and you yeah, and this would be, I'm going to unmute you all, uh, and uh, please feel free to jump in with your questions. You know, you how to raise your hands you know, digitally or in person, uh, you know, but uh, let's do that. Uh, this, is, this is a great time uh, to, uh, if you have questions about anything that Candace has said, but also if you have questions that maybe you are nervous to ask your talent agent, you know, here's a great extremely low stress way to ask somebody who's not your talent agent and so doesn't have like a personal stake in it. Uh, and so the, you know, like it won't be the same answer, but maybe it'll be uh, the, uh, like a good practice. So anything that you want to uh, <laughs> yeah, ask uh, Candace. There. Okay, you are unmuted, except for those of you who muted yourselves, you'll have to unmute yourselves. Uh, questions for Candace? Now, uh, we do have uh, one uh, person you know, here, you know, and maybe more folks who are watching it, uh, who's not in Vancouver. You know, um, so just to, to qualify for you, Lily, uh, that each city is going to have uh, really different expectations in terms of you know, what those particular talent agents like. Great, uh, Lincoln, you're gonna have to unmute yourself, but you know, what do you got? Lincoln has a question, but we can't. Um, what, before the whole COVID-19 broke out, how much work were your actors usually getting? Uh, that's such a broad question, Lincoln. Uh, what, are, you, are you trying to figure out whether the amount of auditions or work you were getting is similar to other people in your age range? Is that where your question is yeah. coming from? Okay. So, for boys who are in the like 11 to 15 category, you know, were you seeing a lot of breakdowns come through for mm -hmm. that age? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, um, there for sure were a few breakdowns in that age category that, that, that does tend to be um, a busier age category because as soon as you get into, sometimes when you get into um, the, say 15 year olds then they usually want them to be over 18 to play younger but um but yeah it sort of depends on the content too so if there's a show that has a lot of of teen characters um there was something that recently came out actually called i think it was called quarantined and the whole concept is that you're at home quarantined and um and i think it would actually shoot at your house you would just shoot it yourself and then it's like all the teens you know talking about what they're doing with this time so i thought that was a neat concept i think josh and raven um so the lady with the blue backdrop and the you know guy who's white on white uh were both taping for that yesterday oh great yeah that's awesome <laughs> are you guys in vancouver yep yeah you're you're both in vancouver excellent yeah 
But um, yeah, it sort of depends on if there's sort of the, the that age category, of course. So it was, you know, moderately busy for 11 to 15 year olds, I'd say. Um, it sort of dips down, like, of course, there's pilot season, which is a little sort of busier. And then, and then this was in the where it sort of ebbs down and then and then sort of leading to summer it gets busier again so we're hoping that we're sort of back on schedule um come july august because that's actually the busy time where all the serious shoot in vancouver anyhow so now, something that the casting director guests have said uh, mm -hmm. each week so far you know, is that they get 80 submissions 100 submissions 200 submissions um, and I'm really curious uh, from your end, because you have, uh, because for just for everybody, the talent agent, right, they're in charge of the actors. So they've got the perspective of like, what helps with multiple casting directors? So not just like what helps with that one relationship, but what seems to be helping their actors get in the room? You know, so we had uh, each of the casting directors say, well, here's what I think, um, here's how I choose you know, those people, like first mm. two people I know, and then here's what makes me say yes to somebody yes, else. To the other ones, yeah. What, what have uh, you experienced, you know, as from your like, you know, professional, you know, actor manager uh, role, what have you experienced as helpful or useful in um, like helping your clients uh, get into the room and, and see those casting directors more, sort of helping the casting, casting say yes to seeing somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, usually when I make a pitch for someone, I just focus on one actor so I can really, you know, really pitch for them instead of saying, you know, I have five actors that are excellent for this role. I usually just send, you know, a link with some material if they have that or a self tape if they don't have anything. Um, I'll send their headshot and their resume and a pitch that I have already made up. Um, and uh, just sort having, of vi having video to attach, whether it's a, a recent self tape you know, or material that they've already uploaded to one of their profiles. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great way, just so they can see you in action. Um, and something that sort of applies or similar to the character that I'm submitting on so they can, you know, sort of see that that you could be that character. So that's usually how I find success in getting people that, you know, might not know in the room. Great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Ken Dace? You we're coming up on the, at the end of our half hour. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for making the time for us today. I, the, uh, this is the, the first time, you know, that uh, any of us have heard it uh, talk in detail about uh, sort of how this is, the quarantine is um, affecting the film TV industry and sort of how it's affecting you and your job. Uh, I really appreciate you making the time. Oh, uh, thank you guys. So, and uh, I think, you know, when this is all said and done, <laughs> there's going to be some changes, but I think we're going to be busier than ever. So I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. Okay, everybody, so thanks for 10 days, would you? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.